story time get ready with me while i tell you guys about my american idol experience in new orleans how i got a golden ticket and why i didn't go through with it disclaimer to this message i do my own stunts eons ago i was an uncouth youth meaning i love the good party or a good time to just act a fool because life is short and what my generation said yolo little did my generation know a lot of that yolo got them out the dope dope you only live once my butt cheeks now y'all are dealing with things you don't want to deal with oh i got arthritis in my liver nobody told you to be drinking jack daniels at 5 a.m anyway at that point in my life i was employed by sephora inside jc penny so i was young i was turned i was a makeup girly that really couldn't make up to save my life but that's neither here nor there you see that it says lice not lying work there at the time i had a co-worker named jerica jerica really wanted to sing and she really wanted that to be her primary career and one thing about me i'm down to support anybody's dream as long as you're not trying to kill me or steal from me or hurt me other than that, like, let's go get it. Woo, it's lit. Or whatever we said back then. Now, I was known for being a little, for lack of better terms, unorthodox. I was never afraid to look quote, end quote, crazy. Plus, I had a podcast called The Lace Up. So, I really, truly didn't mind yapping. So, one day, I was at work and it was slow. And my co-worker, Jerrica, walked up to me and was like, Hey, Lace, I have a good idea. I really want to go to American Idol and I think you should come with me. Me being me, I was like, okay, continue. She was like, the auditions are coming to New Orleans and I really don't want to go by myself. I was like, Kanye shrug. All right. Now I was already sold that I was going, but also a lot of people knew I was a troll at that point, like literally a bridge troll. So she thought about it for a second and she looked at me and she was like, you know what'll be a good idea? If you come with me and you look so bad that I look so good. Immediately, I did not take offense to that at all. A light bulb actually went off in my head and I was like, that sounds like so much fun. Crazy, right? But no, not really. It was me. I started to get excited. I was like, do you know all the crap I could get into and do? This sounds like so much fun. I did not take offense to that at all. I started writing out my plan of attack. How am I gonna do this? Mind you, how am I gonna act? What I'm gonna wear? I wasn't even concerned about the song choice at that point. I just knew I was going and I was going to be ridiculous. And one thing I can tell you, if you're gonna be Ronald McDonald, you commit to being Ronald McDonald. If you wanna be Pennywise, you commit to being Pennywise. If you wanna be the village idiot or pretend to be, commit to being the village idiot. Fast forward to the morning of. At this point in my life, I did not have a car. I did not have a vehicle. I'm not like you girls. I didn't get a car until I got older and I was able to pay for it myself. No co-signer. So Jerrica had to come and pick me up. So Jerrica called me and was like, girly pop, I'm outside. And I was like, girly pop, say less. So when I came out, she was like, girl, what are you wearing? And I was like, girl, don't worry about all that. Don't worry about all that. Worry about yourself. Give a description of what I was actually wearing was a jean pair of shorts some cute little jean booty shorts a uh, wife beater like the one i have on now that was tied up so that my midriff was exposed a pair of jordans some sunglasses some silver foil paper for my teeth a uh, uh a hat a bucket hat i forgot what team it was but a bucket hat a red bandana and a sharpie marker and she was like what are you gonna do with that sharpie marker i was like mind yours you're gonna find out later when we get there. So to give you guys kind of a timestamp of when this was, Two Chains album had just came out. The one with I'm different, yet yeah, I'm different. Pull up to the scene with my silly missing. Pull up to the scene with my silly missing. Had just came out, okay? So we went in a car jamming, like what? So we finally pull up to the parking lot for the New Orleans Superdome because that's where the audition was held. Now mind you, I had no intention on going far. I was strictly there to observe 
and clown. So after we park, we finally make it to like the top of the Superdome, the outer level, which is where everyone is lining up for the audition. I heard this whole experience being a joke for me. I also snuck in a bottle of Hennessy. Not the big bottles, like the little pints. And you weren't supposed to bring liquor or anything like that with you in the Superdome, but I stuck it in my, 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 my. So absolutely no one was checking for that when we went through security. Now mind you, I high key look a fool because I do have silver, silver foil wrapper in my mouth. And this Captain Jack Sparrow attitude about me like, yo ho ho what about a Henny. I think I took a shot of three before we actually got out of the car. Anyway, I'm lit. We're having a good time. We're meeting people from all over the United States that came down to New Orleans for the audition. While we were in line, I was like a kid in a playground. I could have used anything and everything. And while we were walking, I saw this piece of caution tape. Clearly that caution tape was there for a reason. And that reason was, it's now mine to use. So I took that tape and wrapped it around my body like a Miss America sash. Mind you, whole time Jerrica thinks this is hilarious and so is everybody that's around us at this point. So we met people and we were talking and while we were in line, a reporter saw my garb. If I'm not mistaken, it was for the Advocate newspaper. And of course she was being messy because that's what the news is. And she was like, oh my God, your outfit is so cool. Why are you wearing caution tape? So I took it up on myself to answer. Because I'm going to be dangerous in this competition. Ah! I think at that point, everybody who was around me should have knew I was on one. But before they officially opened the doors, Ryan Seacrest did his little shanty with everyone around saying, this is American Idol and we're in New Orleans. And everybody in the crowd had to go, woo. Because, you know, it's American freaking Idol. So after all that pomp and circumstance, I really didn't know what song I was gonna perform, but they let us in. And as they let us in, they gave us these little questionnaires to fill out, I guess to kind of gauge our personalities, uh, to ask us personal questions before you went up to see your producer to perform. And boy, oh boy, did I have fun with that sheet of paper. I wrote all kind of crazy, ridiculous things on it. I don't remember exactly what, but I knew it was out the box and ridiculous. And I knew anybody in their right mind would know. Either she's crazy or she's trolling. And to be real with you, it was probably a combination of both. <laughs> now, once we got in the doors, that's when the party really started and I realized how many people was actually there. Now, the Superdome is large. I can't tell you exactly how many people it sits, but it sits a lot of people. It's called the Superdome for a reason. It's not called a mini dome, it's called a super dome. But when I tell you that arena was packed, it was packed. The way that they set us up, they had everybody sit in rows and they called the contestants up by row. And they had a bunch of producers. I can't get them on there. They had a bunch of producers on the ground, right? So each producer got like four people per producer. So when they call rows, they call whole rows at a time. It was very, very organized, very, very organized. So, of course, we had to wait a while. We weren't at the front of the line. So when we were sitting there, we were just joking. My friend Jerrica was singing her song, practicing, doing her thing. I'm like, yes, girl, yes. Now, one thing I have to tell everybody, it takes a lot of courage to follow your dream, okay? It takes a lot of courage to follow your dream. And I, if you do that, do that. It also takes a lot of courage to be a clown and not care what people think about you. Shout out to me. <laughs> Now in the meantime, in between time, the Henny started moving like it was the Mississippi River running. You know, I had to go potty. I got up and went to use the ladies room. Now mind you, at this point, I did not know what song I was gonna perform, okay? I knew I was dressed magnificently crazy. But as far as my performance went, no clue. So while I was releasing the Kraken, I heard a girl in the stall next to me on the phone and I vividly Remember the conversation. It went, oh my God, I spent the last of my rent money getting to New Orleans and I know I'm as good a singer as Whitney Houston. They have to take me this time. Why she said that? What did that girl say that for? It was right then and there that I knew exactly what I was gonna perform. After I left the stall and I went to go wash my hands, I looked at my outfit. I looked at the thug life that I wrote on my chest in a Sharpie with a hashtag and I said girly we're gonna give them a show they will not forget okay so this girl said all of this and Whitney Houston had just passed away recently so I was like weird thing to say but go off queen but I'm jacking your idea too 
So by the time I stumbled my henny full butt back to the row, Jericho was like, you made it back in enough time. We're about to get called. So I was like, showtime. Now, as they were calling us down row for row, <coughs> That was dumb. Now, as they were calling our row down, Jerrica and I got split up. We got split up. So that plan, pfft, out the door. That went south. That went south quickly. She was in the group right before me. I was in the group right after her. Like, how inconvenient. But it happened. Now, low key, this is where I start to feel a little bad. Not too bad, just a little bad. There was a guy next to me in line and he was so nervous like he was so nervous he was like oh my god i've waited my whole life to get in front of somebody this is my dream this is my passion like i'm so nervous i i want this to really happen meanwhile i was belching up the henny like dang that's real but at the same time this is hollywood boy so the producer asked for our paper and we handed it in one by one so he could read it to, I guess, get a gauge on our personalities like it was meant to do in the first place or see what they can and cannot use. We handed him the paper. We waited in line for a while. He skimmed over the papers and everyone in line just seemed so nervous. Like, okay, this is it. This is it. I'm going to make it. This is my big ticket. This is my big ticket. And I was like, this is my big ticket to clown them. So after the producer read the papers he was like okay you all have 30 seconds to impress me so each contestant went ahead and they did their thing now mind you they saved the best for last because i was the last one in line everyone did their thing and then they got to the star of the show it's me even though i got separated from jerica i am a true thespian the show must go on i continued to clear my throat uh, 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 and I proceeded to screech. And I will always love you. Yeah. We'll always love you. Now, my notes probably were a little worse than that, you know, but... That's a, that's a roundabout picture of where it was going. Now, it didn't end at that. It didn't end at that. After I hit that, you, I started beatboxing. I said, just think and they ain't saying nothing. A hundred month can't tell me now i was shaking i was gyrating i was all on the ground i had done a little tumble roll on the ground baby i was putting on a show i bees in the trap bees in the trap i bees in the trap bees in the trap it was so bad that it was so good nobody stopped me I'm convinced I went over 30 seconds. I know for a fact I went over 30 seconds. Nobody stopped me. I heard a rat piss on cotton in that Superdome. It was that bad. That it was that good. Now I'm carrying on bad. I believe I've made it to the second verse of Bees in the Trap. Before I told myself, yeah, I'm done. I'm done. And I politely brought my butt right back to where I was supposed to be in line at the end. Saving the best for last. Now, if she ain't a Nikki fan, then the girl is. All right. The producer took time to look back over the papers and then look over us, like, individual by individual, like, I'm deliberating. So, one by one, he told everyone starting in the beginning, like, thank you for coming out to American Idol, but we're not looking for you at this time. I'm in line, like, whatever. I, I still got the Henny going on. Anything goes. So the second person, you know, thanks for coming out to American Idol. We're not looking for you at this time. The guy next to me that I felt bad for, for two seconds. This is Hollywood, baby. Thank you for coming out, but we're not looking for you at this time. Then he got to me. He was like, could you please come forward? And me playing coy, I was like, who, me? So I walked forward. And when I walked forward, he was like, Here's your golden ticket. You're moving to the next round. What did that man tell me that for? I 
snatched that golden ticket and I ran around the Superdome. If you know what a large arena looks like, you know what a large arena looks like. That is a football field. I snatched that golden ticket and I yelled, I'm going to Hollywood! I'm going to Hollywood! I'm going to, I'm going to Hollywood! Ran the whole ground of the arena and did. All y'all was going to know that I made it to Hollywood. So after I got my ticket, they queued us up. You had to go and get your, uh, you have to go and get your things to make it to the second audition because there's like three auditions and I got my golden ticket. Unfortunately, Jerrica didn't get a ticket, but Jerrica took it seriously and they need clowns for TV. They need clowns and I was going to be that clown. And I knew that. Therefore, I didn't show up to that second audition because who was going to put me out there like that? I'm actually talented and funny. I had a podcast. Like, could had could it have boosted my podcast at the time? Absolutely. Do I want to go down in history as a clown for two seconds? Not even 15 seconds. For two seconds of fame. Absolutely not. And the weirdest thing about this story is that I had people that I know personally who are very talented, who were mad at me because I got that ticket. Little did they know I was a clown behind getting that ticket. And once you are labeled as a clown, it's hard to break that stigma. Okay, I'm actually talented. I have a lot to offer to the world. Did I wanna get in that way? Absolutely not. Now, high key, high key, I am 100% convinced that the producers were trying to set me up. They were trying to set me up because baby, they would have had a good season because guess who was the judge that season? None other than Miss Onika Tanya Mirage and Hot Girl Mariah and Keith Urban. Would they have had a key key on me? Absolutely. And the moral of this story is if you want to be a clown, don't be surprised when they treat you like a clown. That's how you got in the door. Also, don't be afraid to look a little crazy. Cause sometimes it gets you to places you need to be. What people call cringe activity is nine times out of 10 door opening activity. So whatever it is, go do that. Go do that. How you do it isn't how anybody else is gonna do it. Two people's paths aren't the same. Just because somebody got it this way doesn't mean you're gonna get it this way. You have to trek your own path. Thanks for coming to my story time.